Okay, Alex, the stage is yours. Thanks. All right, I'm Alex Stoiker. Um, I work for AMD, uh, and this talk is about uh, why peer-to-peer -peer DMA is so challenging on Linux, and you know, I guess challenging on more than just Linux, but you know, this, this is focusing on Linux. So uh, to start things off, I guess for those of you that don't know, you know what is peer-to-peer peer -to -peer DMA and how does it work? So um, you know, peer-to-peer -peer means to device to device, and DMA is direct memory access. So you you know you have devices accessing each other's resources directly uh, without going through system memory or through the CPU. Um, platforms generally have uh, you know a, a system physical address space, and then within that they have apertures that are defined um, for I/O space. Um, and on a lot of you know, for example. 32-bit platforms, I mean, you, you have to divide that 32-bit physical address space between I.O. and um, memory access. Uh, so you have a pretty limited window. And on, you know, modern devices with a lot of um, memory or, you know, you know large doorbell uh, apertures and things like that, I mean, it, it takes a lot of memory. Um, so on newer 64-bit platforms, I mean, we have a lot more space. So you'll often have multiple apertures, you know, a legacy one below 32-bit and then a larger one um, up at a higher address range uh, where, you, where you can map, you know, either remap or, or directly map the bars uh, um, of your devices. Um, you know, on, on PCI devices, the bars are what we use. Um, I mean, they're, they're ostensibly for CPU access, but, um, you know, you can access them with another device too, uh, as if it were system memory, and you can do a direct peer to peer. Um, transfer. Um, the uh, I, I also mentioned a couple of vendor-specific interconnects here, uh, XGMI, which is AMD's, and then MD Link. Um, you know, they, they are often faster or provide different uh, coherency guarantees compared to PCI or PCIe, but um, you know, they're not generic solutions. So, but you you may you may run into them um, in, in in discussions of peer-to-peer. Of -peer. So. Why would you want to do peer-to-peer -peer DMA? Like, what, what is it good for? Um, well, you, I mean, it, obviously, it saves a trip through system memory uh, if you don't need it. And you can build pipelines without any CPU overhead or synchronization. So, I mean, if you think about it, you can have a pipeline where you kick off an operation on the GPU. It processes some data. Uh, once, it, once it's done with that processing, it um, can, via a peer-to-peer -peer, peer -peer transaction, uh, can hit a doorbell in um, another device's bar, uh, like say an RDMA controller, and uh, transfer that data to another node in a network. Um, you know, all without any CPU interaction. So you know, it, it has a lot of advantages. Uh, and now you're probably thinking, well, this sounds great. What's the catch? Well, the catch is PCI never really formally defined peer-to-peer. And the early chipsets, maybe it worked, maybe it didn't. Um, that's improved a lot today, but there's still no standard official way to tell if a particular chipset supports it or not. Uh, in the kernel, we have a whitelist of um, which platforms support it. Um, on the AMD side, all Zen chips support it for both reads and writes. On uh, PCI, AMD PCI chipsets prior to that only supported it for writes. Um, Intel has uh, some limitations on some platforms, uh, like I think you know it doesn't work over QPI links, but um, it does in some other cases. I'm, I'm not sure the overall status of which platforms it works or doesn't work on. And then for non-X86, um, you know, I have no idea, but it, it's um, it's hit or miss. And then the the other thing is. Um, there was no IOMU, which and it's still largely the case on other OSs. Um, but the, the important thing there is that the IOMMU can provide um, I/O remapping, and so if you end up on systems with um, you know I/O space uh, up uh, you know at, at high addresses, you might have a device that has a pretty limited um, uh, ability to ad address physical addresses, and you need some device to um, be able to access a, a bar that that's that's way up there uh, at a high address. Um, so those are kind of the reasons that it, it's it's been problematic um, historically. 
So, um, I mean, you know, you're probably think, thinking, well, it sounds like Linux can handle this now. What's the problem? Well, it didn't until recently. So, um, you know, a lot of uh, other solutions filled the void to begin with, and they tended to be sort of proprietary and, um, you know, not really upstreamable. Um, you know, it, it often f fell down to, you know, passing around system physical addresses being the lowest common denominator and the most expeditious route to support it. Um, so there's a bunch of existing APIs out there. Um, you know, the, the, the GPU direct and peer direct stuff from Mellanox and NVIDIA and the you know, direct GMA stuff from AMD. Um, I mean, these were largely focused around uh, high performance compute and workstation use cases. Um, you know, where, you know, usually those users tended to be tied in pretty into proprietary systems pretty heavily uh, and had, you know, large entrenched user bases. Um, it also didn't help that until recently, Windows didn't use the IOMU. So, you know, passing around physical addresses, you know, kind of just worked. Whereas on Linux, the IOMMU has been used for IO remapping for ages. And so if you pass around physical addresses, you're not necessarily passing around real physical addresses. You're actually passing around IO virtual addresses for a particular device. Um, so, you know, a lot of times the advice for, for workstation users was if you wanted to use these, these APIs, you needed to disable the IOMMU, which kind of, you know, prevents all the capabilities that, that, that it provides. So um, now that we do have some solutions upstream, I'm kind of, kind of talk about the two of them. Uh, there's two of them uh, in tree. And the first one is the peer-to-peer -peer PCI DMA um, API. It was largely designed around uh, NVMe Fabrics offload. Um, and the, 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 the model uh, obviously is reflected in the API. Um, it's very similar to the DMA API where you, you have a, um, you know, the, 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 the one, the person that wants to use the remote, um, in this case, the client that wants to use the uh, um, remote resource uh, would, would allocate the memory and then it's sort of pinned as long as it needs it. And then when it's done with it, it's, it's freed back to the, the subsystem. So you have these three, um, these sort of three constructs. You have a provider which registers uh, their, their resource. Um, and then you have a client, which is who allocates the memory. And then when, so, you know, there's an, there's an IPI to allocate the memory. And then you would call something like PCI P2P DMA map SG instead of the standard DMA map SG if it's device memory in order to map it. Um, and then you also have this idea of an orchestrator, which is, um, you know, another possible um, thing involved that, that could orchestrate the transaction. If you have like, we say multiple paths to um, a target or something like that um, on a large system. Um, you know, memory is always pinned. Um, this works well for the specific use case it was added for, but it doesn't for a lot of other use cases. Then we have uh, DMA buff and this recently went upstream um, due to uh, a lot of the work from my, uh, my um, colleague, Christian Koenig. Um, and DMA buff is a, is a framework for sharing buffers and hardware across drivers. Um, it was uh, you know, largely used by the GPU and video for Linux drivers. Um, recently, it gained support for um, allowing unpinned access to memory uh, using DMA fences. Um, it, it also has some uh, synchronization mechanisms as well that, um, you know, the, the other API did not, that, that allows for some um, sort of more advanced pipelines and stuff. But there are some challenges with that. Um, you know, the, the programming model obviously reflects its use cases similar to the peer-to-peer -peer, uh, PCI APIs. Um, you have an exporter which allocates the memory and shares it and then you have importers which import it and you know do what they need to do with it um it's not page backed like uh um like the peer-to-peer -peer api uh so you need to use a you know a different um method so the importer might have to do something like dma map resource uh to in order to um in order to map it into its um address space um you know, the exporter registers DMA buff callbacks on it. Um, the, the importer can register a callback. It's not, I 
this slide is not quite correct. It's the, the, the move notify callback that the importer can register um, is not for peer to peer per se, although it's a requirement of it, um, but it's actually for uh, the ability to, to um, deal with the resources moving um, and, and, and needing to invalidate and recreate its mapping. And that allows and that allows um, you know the resources to not have to be pinned. And for things like GPUs where VRAM is a very scarce resource, um, you know, it allows more flexibility. And then uh, HMM, um, this isn't really a peer-to-peer -peer system. I, I bring it up mostly because a lot of people think HMM is the solution to a lot of problems in the kernel, but um, it, you know, it's it's not exactly a peer-to-peer -peer sharing system. It's, it's a, a mechanism to provide a shared virtual address space for multiple devices. Um, at the moment, it doesn't have a mechanism for doing peer-to-peer, -peer, um, but I believe there are some discussions about possibly adding that functionality. It might have even had it in an earlier revision. I don't remember offhand. Um, but this is, you know, this is just a little bit of more information about what it does here um, and how it relates. Uh, and then major use cases. Uh, so I mean, this is just a an example, um, you know. But I mean, there's obviously a lot more you could come up with. Um, but I mean, very common ones are using you know, GPUs plus uh, RDMA NICs, uh, or you know, possibly uh, NVMe devices. Um, and you know, to, to to build pipelines of you know, computation and transfers, or being able to stream. Um, you know, data directly out of storage, directly into a, a device for where, where it could be used. Unfortunately, uh, these different subsystems use different P2P frameworks. And so the, I guess the question I'm posing here is, um, you know, is there a way we can make this all work together? Um, you know, historically, uh, you know, RDMA controllers assume that memory will be pinned and their whole sort of, uh, Programming model kind of depends on that. Um, with GPUs, we, you know, VRAM has traditionally been a very scarce resource, or if not necessarily VRAM, then then the bar. Um, you know, often on, on older systems with only a, uh, a MMIO aperture, you know, below 32 gig or 32 uh, bits, um, you know, you have very limited um, bar space, so you might only have 256 or 128 um, megabits of, of accessible device memory. That's less of a case with uh, bar resizing and and 64-bit platforms that have you know large bars uh, support. So, um, you know, can we make it work? Um, you know, we, we traditionally don't want to pin VRAM, but on systems with you know a lot of GPUs, you may end up actually having more VRAM than system memory. And so, is it really the scarce resource that it is um, it has traditionally been? And uh, you know, sort of just food for thought. Stuff we can kind of think about here is. Maybe we can pin VRAM in order to support, you know, pipelines involving RDMA NICs or NVMe, for example. Uh, and maybe RDMA controllers with on-demand paging support could support um, you know, VMA buff and being able to, to deal with the fact that, um, you know, memory might end up not being pinned all the time. And that's it. Questions? So far, I do not have anything. So, all right. Wait a second. Hmm. Well, then I guess that's it. Thanks a lot for the talk. And. Sure. Uh, then we're going to have the lightning talks and uh, the